I'm Katie Feldman, and several years ago, I started a program called Save the Salamanders in Middlesex, Vermont. Save the Salamanders is mostly focused on trying to conserve a specific species of salamander, but my purpose in telling you about it is much larger. I hope that by telling other people what I've done, I can help give them the information and encouragement they need to start a project of their own. Even more than just trying to expand Save the Salamanders, what I'd really like to do is to help empower other young people so that they feel like they can do something for a cause they believe in. I was able to create this DVD because I received a grant from the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Someday, you may want to look into applying for a grant for your own project. In addition to getting a grant, I'd help from the Association of Vermont Recyclers. The Association of Vermont Recyclers Youth Environmental Coalition is a network of teens involved in environmental projects in their schools and communities. The coalition aims to support their efforts to impact the environment in positive ways through education and empowerment programs. The Youth Environmental Coordinator, Krista Harness, is available to assist with project planning, implementation, and promotion. If you'd like to find out what services AVR can offer in your area, please call 802-454-8400 or visit them online at www.vtrecyclers.org. You can also contact the YEC coordinator at yec at vtrecyclers.org. Let me tell you a little bit about Save the Salamanders. Since my project, although it is by no means the only one of its kind, began in Middlesex, Vermont, it started by being mainly concerned with the common species of salamander that lives there, the Ambystoma maculata, or Eastern Spotted Salamander. This type of salamander is called mole salamander because it spends much of its time underground. They live for most of the year in upland woods and forests, staying under logs and leaf litter, and then usually spend the winters in old animal burrows below the frost line. In the spring, however, they do something quite unusual. On the first warm rain of every spring, they all come out of their burrows and migrate in a single night to the ponds and pools where they'll mate and lay their eggs. This massive migration usually occurs on only one or two nights every year. Because these ambies lay their eggs almost exclusively in vernal pools, pools of water that dry up in the summer, they usually travel from higher to lower ground during their migration. And this means that there will almost certainly be a road that they will have to cross. Ambies are beautiful, but they're also slow. As they cross the roads at night, the roadkill rate can be really horrendous. What Save the Salamanders does is organize volunteers to go out during the migration nights and move salamanders across the road. There are certain places where many salamanders will cross at once, so it's not too hard to find them. All it takes to save hundreds of lives in a single night is a couple of phone calls and a few dedicated volunteers. A yearly mass migration greatly affects the life cycle of the Ambystoma. Each year, after this migration, the salamanders lay their eggs in vernal pools, and the cycle starts anew. Salamander eggs are laid in clumps somewhat similar to frog eggs. Their egg masses, however, generally have fewer eggs in them and have a sack of pure jelly around the mass itself, while frog eggs have only jelly around each individual egg. When the eggs hatch, the juvenile salamanders emerge. These little creatures, or ambipoles as we like to call them, are aquatic and very beautiful because of their large external gills. They're also quite aggressive, and will attack anything small enough to fit into their mouth. When they hatch, they're about one centimeter long, and will grow to about two inches before losing their external gills, gaining their adult coloring, and emerging from the water to take up residence in the woods. Ambies are very long-lived for amphibians, some surviving up to twenty years. An ambi might not be sexually mature for up to six years, but when they are, they'll go on their own migration and start the life cycle again. Ambies aren't the only ones crossing the roads in the spring. Other common species include newts, wood frogs, toads, spring peepers, and the occasional red-backed salamander or red eft. If you go out during a crossing night, it will most likely be above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, raining, and early spring. The date varies from year to year, as well as by latitude, so you have to watch out for these criteria. If you don't know where the crossings are near you, the first year should be an exploratory one. 
Part of the reason so many salamanders are run over by cars is that drivers don't know what to look for. If it's possible, you should have someone who knows what to look for with you when you go out for the first time. An ambi in the road looks basically like a mossy stick with one end sticking up. As soon as you know what to look for, they're easy to find, but if you don't, they're just as easy to run over. Once you've identified the crossings near you, or even before that if you're really organized, you can disseminate some information not only beforehand, but during the crossing night. The way I do this is by printing handouts in advance and making salamander crossing signs to use at night. Pre-made handouts and signs can be found on my website at savethesalamanders.org. One great way to spread your project, no matter what it is, is to get some media attention. Chances are, your local or school newspaper will be more than happy to do an article about a young person taking steps to save the environment. This spreads awareness and lets people know that you're really serious about your project. please visit us at www.savethesalamanders.org.